All right, good evening. Um, my name is Shannon Jones. I am a professor at the University of Richmond, of course, in the biology department. And I'm excited to present for the Spider Summer Series about the program URISE and also um, to share more information about integrated and inclusive science at the University of Richmond. So I'll start with just a brief uh, introduction of myself to talk a little bit about the courses that I teach <clears throat> and to provide some general information about STEM departments at the university. And then I'll talk about um, the program URISE and the academic course SMART. And then after this brief presentation, I'll have some time for questions. I have some time for questions. All right. So I've been at U of R uh, since 2015, almost eight years. It's hard to believe I've been at the university for so long. Um, and I teach a variety of courses in the biology department. Most of my time is spent teaching first year students in a class called Science, Math, and Research Training, or SMART, which I'll talk more about later. I teach a sophomore scholars and residence course also, um, which is a non, uh, this is a science course for students that are not intending to major in STEM. Uh, that course is called Toxic Communities, and its focus is in um, helping students understand issues related to environmental justice. And then I also teach an upper level biology elective for biology majors and that class is called the science of poisoning and it's a fun uh, toxicology class that I enjoy teaching. Uh, I wear many other hats in, in my department. I coordinate URISE and SMART which is the focus of today's webinar. I also mentor students in the research lab and my research projects that I have students working on are all focused on environmental justice. Specifically, students um, do research regarding indoor air pollution and how um, it impacts susceptible or marginalized populations. So uh, first of all, welcome to U of R if you recently enrolled. So we're excited to see you in the fall. And if you are intending to major in a STEM discipline at U of R, just a few tidbits of information I wanted to share and what you can expect. Um, I'm happy to say that all of our um, STEM majors are have access to abundant resources. Um, and we offer small class sizes. SMART in particular, the course I'm gonna talk about today, we typically don't enroll, enroll more than 20 students. So we have a lot of time built in um, to provide our students with authentic, authentic research opportunities in the classroom. We also teach in such a way that, um, that allows all students to thrive and succeed regardless of their preparation before college. And so we have this focus on um, making sure our classes are diverse and inclusive because of our small class sizes, we can offer close uh, faculty, uh, faculty mentoring uh, and our alumni network is strong. We can um, help students connect with uh, former students that majored in STEM uh, while they were at the university. And uh, we use teaching um, techniques or pedagogy that are student-centered, right? So our focus is helping our students thrive as they work through their um, courses. And most of our students participate in cutting edge research. Um, the, the College of Arts and Sciences offers summer fellowships. Um, students can also uh, do research during the academic year for credit. Um, and you can get started in research right away, right after your, your first year um, at U of R. And this is just a picture I like to share of our students last summer uh, working on their uh, research projects. So most of the students uh, in the Gottwald Science Center shown here are engaged in research both over the summer and during the academic year. And our students have a wide um, variety of interests. Quite a few of them are pre-health interested. That could be students wanting to go to medical school, Quite a few students are interested in nursing and um, PA programs, but we also have students uh, who are just interested in research perhaps, or they wanna go to other professional schools. And then we also welcome students who are undecided, uh, who just generally have an interest in STEM, but haven't quite figured out what they want to do that yet is perfectly fine with us. 
So um, now I'm going to switch gears just a little bit to talk about integrated and inclusive science. I've been involved with this program for the last uh, six years, and I'm super proud of the work that we've been able to do to increase the number of students from underrepresented backgrounds uh, in science and math disciplines at University of Richmond. So in an integrated and inclusive science, we work to build a community of support for all students so that all students can succeed and thrive in STEM, again, regardless of the classes they took in high school or regardless of um, uh, um, being from a traditionally underrepresented uh, background in terms of race or ethnicity. And in IIS, we focus on uh, helping students develop skills to become confident scientists. Again, we provide very close uh, mentoring of our students throughout their time in the program. And again, we guarantee them an authentic research experience. So in this program, we work to really use inclusive teaching practices, right? And the point of that is to make STEM accessible to all, right? We want to increase equity and uh, inclusion in STEM. And so to do that, we use a variety of teaching techniques and methods to reach all students. We realize our students learn in a lot of different ways. So we employ a lot of different strategies to help all of our students succeed. And our classes are very high structure and highly engaged. And when we teach concepts related to STEM, we try really hard to um, provide examples to students that reach across cultures, right? So we try to use culturally relevant examples of data and information. Um, again, trying to get students engaged from all different backgrounds. And studies have shown that when you use these inclusive teaching um, techniques, it helps to retain students, again, that are traditionally, that have been traditionally underrepresented in STEM. And what these teaching techniques allow us to do is to remove these roadblocks that in the past have kept students um, uh, from persisting in STEM. And we talk about um, these barriers such as bias, stereotype threat, and imposter syndrome. And what we found is that when we use these kinds of techniques, our students thrive, not just survive, and they do adopt this growth mindset that, uh, that helps prepare them for the challenges that they're gonna face throughout their time in college. And so, oops. I like to refer to you rising smart as a unique signature first year experience in STEM for our students. And so uh, I realize there are lots of acronyms. So I would like to use this diagram to sort of sort of provide the structure of um, you rise. So the program starts with a pre first year experience over the summer. And that program is called URISE, the University of Richmond Integrated Science Experience. It takes place over the course of two, uh, two weeks in July, and anyone is welcome to apply to URISE, but we strongly encourage students from um, racial ethnic back, uh, backgrounds that have been typically underrepresented in science, as well as first generation college students. So you come to campus for two weeks. Um, we do lots of skill building, community building, and then those students in URISE will take an academic course during their fall and spring of their first year entitled SMART. After the completion of SMART, that following the summer, all SMART participants and URISE uh, participants are guaranteed a paid summer research experience that's not the Richmond guarantee. This is a, an experience uh, specifically for URISE and SMART students. And then after that first year, we continue to mentor and connect with the students as they matriculate uh, and, and complete the remaining semesters of their college experience. And they participate in a variety of other high impact um, programs such as SSIR. Um, and uh, some of them will do the science scholars and leadership program. And so there are lots of opportunities uh, for our students to engage in these high impact practices uh, after their time in SMART. So just a couple of deadlines and I'll mention them throughout the presentation. The URISE application is due soon. It's due this upcoming Sunday on May 7th. Uh, and then the SMART application, which is a part of the overall Endeavor program application, that will be due on June 1st. 
So I've had the pleasure of coordinating uh, URI since 2017. And this year's program will be held uh, July 5th through July 21st. And I have just a few pictures of URI's cohorts over the last several years. And uh, just a little bit more background about uh, URI's. Its purpose is to remove barriers that typically impede the persistence and retention of underrepresented students in science. And so it's really an opportunity for students who've committed to come to U of R to spend a couple of weeks on, uh, of their summer basically preparing for college. Uh, it, this, pro this program helps with matriculation. It helps students learn the campus, become more familiar with campus, uh, also meet some of their peers. Um, and we provide lots of fun uh, community building and skill building activities. And during URISE, students have their first experience with authentic uh, research. And again, all students are welcome to apply. The deadline is May 7th. And again, we provide lots of field experiences for students each year. We do research that's not just contained in a traditional lab. Students are out in the field collecting data, as you can see here. Uh, we collect uh, fruit flies uh, at the at a local orchard and do um, some experience uh, experiments learning about genetics of fruit flies. Um, we also do a lot of excursions in the city of Richmond, such as visiting the Maggie uh, Walker historic uh, site. We do fun community building like escape rooms. And again, I chose these pictures because they really illustrate the wonderful community that's formed um, among our students, even over a short period of time, which is two weeks during the URI session. So URI is, is the summer component. And then after that program is over, once students start classes in the fall, all URI's participants are automatically enrolled in the academic course SMART, which stands for Science, Math, and Research Training. This is an integrated science course just for first year students. And uh, it's a year long, unlike other classes at U of R, it's not just one semester, it's two semesters. But over the course of two semesters, students will get credit for um, the introductory biology class, which we refer to as biology 192, introductory chemistry, chem 192, and also calculus one, which is math 211 and calculus two, which is math 212. So at the end of two semesters, students will have earned these four units and it's integrated. So it's all mixed together. So students are learning biology, chemistry, and math through the lens of our theme which is infectious disease. So in the fall, students learn about antibiotic resistance. And in the spring, we focus on infectious diseases, primarily um, like HIV. Again, we welcome all students to apply. And so this is what uh, a, a sample schedule would look like for students coming up in the fall. So all first year students will register for typically four classes. And for our smart students, they'll be registered for bi Biology 192, which it, it, it contains both biology and chemistry, but for the purposes of, of, of on the transcript, this is what will show up for our students. They'll take the biochem portion of SMART and calculus along with an FYS of their choice and another elective, the same for the spring. Instead of calling it Bio 192, now you'll get the credit for the chemistry 192, Calc 2, uh, another FYS and an additional elective. And SMART faculty will help advise students later this summer on how to pick out uh, these other classes, primarily your additional elective that you'll take. Um, and so just a little bit more about what happens in the SMART course. Our goal is to show students the interdisciplinary nature of science, right? We aren't just in silos working alone. In the real world, scientists collabor collabor uh, collaborate across disciplines and we demonstrate to students how that's done. And so we show how biology and chemistry can intersect as well as how that science intersects with math to solve big global issues such as antibiotic resistance that 
unfortunately has been increasing across the globe. And we also talk about HIV. Uh, we talk about the biology of that infection and why we don't have a cure to date for um, this infection. So those are just a snapshot of some of the topics we'll talk about in SMART. I also wanna highlight that for the last three years, two years now, this will be the third uh, year that SMART is now a part of the Endeavor program, which is a living and learning program. And so all students that participate in URISE and participate in SMART will be a part of the Endeavor program. That also includes a roadmap short course that takes place the week before classes start. You can find out more information about Endeavor on the website, but I really enjoy uh, the smart, uh, SMART being a part of this program because it provides students with lots of opportunities to connect with their peers and build community. And again, the, the deadline for SMART will be June 1st, the, the SMART application rather. And this is a team taught course. Um, I'm super excited to get to work with um, other faculty members that care about inclusion and diversity in STEM. And so uh, as you rise participants, you would meet um, the rest of the SMART team. We have two chemists that teach uh, in the biochem portion of SMART and another biologist, Dr. Pierce, and all of myself, we teach the biology portion. Um, and then uh, Dr. Torres will teach calculus one and, and, and calculus two. In addition to all the coursework in SMART, um, because we are in part of the endeavor, we have resources to take students off campus for a variety of excursions. Um, we go uh, apple picking in the fall. Um, we actually made liquid nitrogen ice cream in the classroom just a few weeks ago. Um, students do engage in authentic research experiences in the SMART class. And at the end of each semester, students present their research at the Arts and Sciences Symposium. So I'm very proud of the work that our students do uh, in and outside of the classroom. I also want to mention that as a student at U of R, you can receive up to $1,000 to present your research at a conference each year. So as I mentioned before, all URIs and SMART students are guaranteed a paid summer research opportunity after their first year. And many of our students go on to present their work at a conference. These are just some pictures of former um, SMART students that I've uh, worked with in the past. We were at a conference in Anaheim, California back in 2019. On the left was before COVID. I was excited to um, be able to attend a conference for the first time since COVID last year, also in Anaheim. Uh, and these are just wonderful opportunities for our students to become more comfortable in their disciplines and gain confidence about their research. I'm proud to say that since we started the SMART program, we are graduating higher numbers of underrepresented students and first-generation college students in our STEM disciplines. Biology tends to have um, the highest percentage of underrepresented students with, when, when it comes to STEM disciplines at U of R, but you can see here that our number of underrepresented students and other disciplines has been increasing, particularly in the quantitative sciences, such as chemistry and computer science. So we are happy to see that we're retaining students. Students are engaging in research. Um, thanks due to you rise and SMART. Uh, I will end there um, and I'm happy to take any questions. I just want to say that we value community at the University of Richmond. We're so excited to have you. I hope you apply to URISE, um, and I hope to see you in the fall of 2023. And if you think of other questions later, feel free to email me. My, again, my name is Shannon Jones. Uh, I can be found on the biology website pretty easily. Uh, here's my email address. And we have um, an Instagram page for URISE and SMART. So please follow us. And with that, I'll stop and take any questions. I was going to say, if anyone has any questions, there should be a Q&A box at the bottom um, where you can type in any questions that you do have. <laughs> Wait a minute and see if we get any. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I'm not seeing anything come through. Um, but obviously, again, um, thank you uh, for coming to present tonight. And if people do have any questions, obviously, um, send an email. Um, and again, if you even send an email to new spiders at richmond.ed. Oh, we did get a question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited. <laughs> So let's see here. Well, Sammy. So. Ah, okay. Yes. So if you are in the smart class, you don't have to register for biology, chemistry, and calculus separately. Um, the students in smart are automatically registered. Um, the biochem class is all mixed together. So even though the title says biology or chemistry, some days you might have a biology lecture from me, other days you might have a lecture from the chemistry professor. So it's all mixed in together. Um, we have one lab period each week. So some weeks you'll be doing biology labs, some weeks you'll be doing chemistry lab. That is just for students enrolled in SMART. Other first year students that are intending to major in a, in a science, say, say biology or chemistry, that aren't as smart will have to enroll in those introductory courses separately. So this is only applying to smart students where you'll be automatically enrolled into this one inter integrated class. Good question. Mm -hmm. One more. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, yes. So a lot of students have a concern about if, if they take SMART, are they going to be behind? Will they meet all their prerequisites on time? All of our students graduate on time. Um, and most of our, um, so we don't track SMART specifically, but we do track um, students who go through this process called HPAC. So HPAC um, is an advisory board of faculty and staff that helps students prepare their materials for applying to medical school. So if you go through this process, you have to submit your application materials, you have to get letters of recommendation, and they actually will go through interviews with you to uh, basically help um, make you as an attractive candidate as possible. And students that go through HPAC, so who, who go through the process, their chances of getting into med school increase significantly. We have a very uh, good success rate of medical school um, entrance when students go through HPAC. And most of our smart students that are pre-med, that are intending to go to med school, they do go through HPAC and they have very um, good success with getting into med school. I just like to reiterate, sometimes students feel like they're gonna be behind, but all of our students graduate on time they get through their coursework at the same rate as their peers. Um, all right, well, I don't see any other questions coming through, um, but, oh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> 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 we appreciate the questions. That's why we're here. <laughs> so, um, Thank you to those yeah. that attended. Thank um, you, everyone. And I hope everyone yeah. has a wonderful evening. And congrats yes. on um, coming to UR, too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Take care. See you in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs>